All right, good day, everybody. Steve Prosprowski here. Welcome to episode 54 of Reach for the Firefighter Badge. Episode 54, we'll discuss something we really haven't talked about before. We've talked about the hiring process. We've talked about how to prepare yourself to become a firefighter. And now we're going to talk about something many of you go on WTF, and WTF doesn't stand for Where's the Fire or Well-Trained Firefighters to some. Some of you go on financial tips for the new or experienced firefighter. Uh, yeah, it's one of the most important things you can do once you get the job and get the career. And sadly, many fail to really take responsibility for their finances. And it's, you know, it's not just a firefighter issue, it's a nationwide issue. Look at professional sports, how many athletes sign these multi-million dollar contracts, nothing that we as firefighters will ever sign, but these professional athletes, they sign these multi-million dollar contracts and then they're bankrupt you know, a year after retirement or even during their, you know, shortly after retirement. NFL, NBA, a number of the major sports, um, not teams, uh, leagues, are actually taking the time to try to educate these newly hired folks, many of whom are straight out of college, maybe straight out of high school with, without really maybe those skills to begin with. Well, as a fire department, we don't really have the time to teach you that. A lot of good unions or associations will take the time to go over financial stuff and offer suggestions, but you've got to be on your own there. So I'm not a financial expert. I'm not a financial planner, a financial analyst, any of those terms. I'm just a deputy chief that's had, you know, almost 30 years of experience doing different things. But I will offer some of my experiences over the years and the best advice I have because I think it is a critical thing because I know you don't give a crap when you're in your 20s. The time goes quick and before you know it, you're in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s. Then it's like, oh, hell, where'd time go? And oh, my God, I wish I would have saved earlier or done this. Yep. So let's get going. All right. As always, my... Two websites, Code3Firetraining.com and ChabotFire.com, have lots of great free resources to help you be the best you can be. Two of the uh, three books I've had published are also available off my websites, the Future Firefighters Preparation Guide, as well as Reach for the Firefighter Badge, both valuable resources. So I mentioned I'm not a financial expert by any means, literally. I, I should say by any means, literally, I'm not a financial expert, okay. So take this advice for whatever you feel is appropriate, but find those resources of yours that you can trust for good advice, not just your buddy. I mean, I know a lot of people rely on their buddy or your brother, your sister. I mean, hopefully they're trained in finance. <laughs> so here we are. Imagine this, some basics for finances for the new firefighter. So in case you haven't figured out by now, why am I bothering to discuss this boring, unsexy topic? Yeah, like I shared already, because there's a lot of firefighters and human beings. I'm not picking on firefighters. I just see so many human beings in general that just don't plan ahead, don't prepare ahead, and then blame everybody else but themselves. You know, it's up to us to make sure we take care of ourselves, our family, and our livelihoods. So as I touched on, it's not just a fire service problem. It's a worldwide problem, and you see it every day. You know, if you don't get in front of finances early on, they'll dig you into a hole ASAP, faster than you could ever imagine. Because again, when you're in your 20s, you don't give a crap most of the time. Most people don't. Then next thing you know, in your 50s, it's like, well, I want to start saving now. It doesn't work that way because the way money, you got to understand how money compounds over time. The smart people are the ones saving right from the get-go before they have families, before they have major commitments, before they have all the toys. I know, we'll talk about toys here in a second. So financial tip number one, save, save, and save your money for the future. Don't rely on your pension. Pensions or retirement plans, well, let's start with pensions. Pensions, as traditional firefighters may know, are actually going away in some areas and some departments because of their costs. They're so expensive. Um, they are expensive and they're not getting any cheaper. So I've seen some departments, even big city fire departments like the city of San Diego got rid of their pension system. They got into a 401k plan, typically a savings plan. You know, I know there's some people that may not want to work there for that reason, but you know what, there's, they, they don't seem to have a problem getting people to apply. I'm not saying, you know, it's a good thing or a bad thing, but here's the thing, you know, I bet you when you ask most 20 year olds about, hey, What's the pension plan they have to offer or any department? I bet you most people don't really understand that. I mean, I really didn't take that much time to really learn it. I knew I had some type of retirement system. But I didn't really totally get it. I just knew, hey, I get to work 10 days a month as a new firefighter, get pretty decent pay, 
some good solid healthcare benefits and I get a retirement plan, I'm golden. Well, that retirement plan, even if you get one, may not be there when you retire. And I know there's people that say, well, hey, I'm, it's my vested right by law because we put into it and that's what blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know what, if your city goes bankrupt, look at the city of Detroit, city of Stockton, California, San Bernardino, California. Once that city goes bankrupt, which you may say, well, that will never happen again. That was, you know, 2008 to 2011, the economic downturn. Ha, huh. well, this is June of 2020 right now, newsflash. The economic downturn that we're dealing with right now because of the coronavirus pandemic that's going on is worse than 2008, 2011. I'm not trying to be mean, pessimistic, or a fear monger. They're comparing this economic downturn to the Great Depression of 1929. So we saw a number of cities going bankrupt, 08, 09, 10, 2011. I wouldn't be surprised if more cities go bankrupt. You may go, well, how can that be? They've got rainy day funds. Right, rainy day funds go like that. And if you really think about what is the primary source for a typical city's revenue, taxes, sales tax, sometimes is half of their revenue. Well, if businesses are closed because of shelter in place orders or they're open for takeout only, but they're getting reduced orders, guess what? Those sales taxes are going down significantly. A lot of cities' revenues are property taxes. Well, guess what? If people can't afford to pay their mortgages or their rents or whatever, they're gonna default on those. It just so cities can't rely on taxes. They're great when they're having, when they're working and when business is good, but they're not great when times are tough as they are right now. So my point is, again, not to be pessimistic or doom, doom and gloom, but it's like, get your head out of the sand and focus on yourself, number one, and more importantly, your family. You may not have a family now, so you may not give a crap about that, but there's a good chance you may have a family with kids and other dependents. Heck, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you may be responsible for your parents. How many times have we seen parents sometimes or grandparents move in with the family? Wouldn't have expected that, would you? Or your kids move back home because again, if the economy is bad, they probably are out of work and they can't afford living on their own. So now you're feeding, not just maybe your significant other, your spouse and yourself, but multiple people. So save, save, and save. I can't stress that enough. Upon hire, just like, if it, Compare yourself to a professional athlete minus the multi-million dollar contract. But, you know, if you think about it in some departments, especially out here on the West Coast, you could be considered that way because if you're getting a six-figure income within the first year or so, times that by 10 and there's a million dollars. Granted, the average firefighter may work 20, 30, 40 years. So it's a lot more. But And I know cost of living is expensive out here, but work with me on this one. When you get hired... Resist the urge. Watch this. I bet you're going to see a lot of your new brothers and sisters go out and buy toys. You know, when I start talk about toys, watercraft, cars, trucks, game, game Boys, or whatever you want to call them, maybe computers, technology, because now all of a sudden you got this influx of cash you may not have had before. But be careful of all these things. Unless you can pay cash for these things, cash is always good. But if you're leasing these things or renting them or rent to own or whatever it is you maybe have a you know loan for five years or ten years if you have all these different loans for all these toys and then you want to say buy a house it don't work that way because the mortgage lender is going to look at it and say you've got too much outstanding debt you've got to pay off all that debt and then come back to us so if you are ever thinking of getting a house or a condo or apart i mean apartment or something that requires maybe a mortgage Get that first. Save up to get that first. Well, I can't afford that first. Well, then if you can't afford that first, you sure as hell can't afford the toys. Sorry, I don't mean to be mean. I know. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Don't get me wrong. I know you've worked hard. You've busted your ass to become a firefighter. I get that. And you do need to reward yourself. So if you really want boats, campers, all the fun stuff, motorcycles, the smart firefighters, they find friends that have those friends or family members, and they'll be the first to say, hey, dude, can we take your boat out next weekend? Or can I take your boat out? Ah, dude, uh, oh, yeah, hey, I'll buy beer, or I'll buy lunch, or I'll buy gas, or I'll chip in for whatever. Yeah, those are the smart folks, because if, if, you, if you ever talk to someone that has bought usually an RV or a boat, usually most of the people I've ever known are usually like, God, I should have rented the damn thing, or I should have leased it. I should not have, well, not leased it, should have rented it. <laughs> because now you buy it, it's yours. You got to maintain it. They're expensive. You usually never get them out as much as you want to for whatever reason. So I'm not saying don't have those, just get them smartly. Like I said, find friends, number one, it'll be a hell of a lot cheaper. 
And you know what, then you have less debt outstanding. So you can get that condo, townhome, house, whatever it is. Then you can have all those mortgages. But hey, one thing at a time here. So some other thoughts. Number two, don't rely on your retirement benefit, your pension, if you even have one. Because like I said, a lot of new hires around the country, cities, fire departments, or fire departments of any type are not offering pensions. They're too expensive. And if you don't believe me, what do you mean they're, Steve, they're expensive? Well, let's do the math. At least in California and a lot of agencies, let's say you make $100,000 a year, which is a lot of money, but not out here. Cost of living eats that up just like that. $100,000 out here is probably the same, maybe 30, 40,000 in other parts of the country. So maybe that, I don't know if that's exact, but probably close. So let's say you're making $100,000 a year. So that's what the department's paying you or the city, the taxpayers are paying you. At least in California, it's not uncommon for you to pay 10% of your salary into your retirement. It's your retirement, so you pay 10%. So if you're making $100,000 a year, you're paying basically $10,000 a year out of that 100,000 into your pension. Well, that's a lot of money, but I got a news flash for you. Before you say that, yeah, it is my pension, which is true, your employer in a lot of areas are paying 50 to 60 cents on the dollar. So. If you're making $100,000, yeah, you're paying $10,000, but your employer may be paying 50% or $50,000, if not a little bit more. So $100,000 salary, 50% of that, $50,000 on top of that for your retirement. And then healthcare costs. Healthcare is not cheap in today's world. It's great to have these benefits that we have, but they're not cheap. So you're making a hundred grand a year, 50K a year for just for your retirement, the city's paying. The city may be paying an extra $10,000 a year, if not more, just for your healthcare benefits, maybe for you or your family. So it's almost sometimes three quarters of your salary for benefits um, and pensions. That's why it's very expensive, especially when healthcare costs go up double digits every year. Yeah, double digits usually. Retirement costs are going up usually for cities. So I know you may not give a crap about this stuff now, but you gotta give a crap about this stuff, especially if you wanna be in this for the long haul, especially if you're involved with your department's union or association or whatever you call it, because you need to understand where the money goes before you go into contract negotiations. I mean, I don't know of any fire chief that is out there to screw the firefighters. I don't know, I, I don't know of any fire, fire, fire chiefs that are there. Fire chiefs usually come from the ranks, they've done your job. They're usually there to, I mean, manage the department, manage the budget, lead the department, I get all those things, but they're also there to be fiscally responsible. So I, it, whether or not you're on the executive union executive board or association executive board, understand where your department dollars are going because they you know it matters it really does a lot of people don't understand that and they don't care and then they wonder why can't we afford this well because of this it's not cheap to run a business let alone a city fire department or any governmental agency but your retirement may not be there when you retire so you better save well i've vested it's guaranteed yeah, yeah you can say that all you want but if your city goes bankrupt yeah if your city goes bankrupt that usually null and voids every union contract. It's a, it's a very last ditch effort that a city may use, but if they're doing that, they're pretty deep in the hole because of employee costs. And if you don't believe me, employee costs, employees meaning fire, police, every employee of a city or county usually make up 90% of their budget between the salary and the benefits for that employee. So there's not a lot of wiggle room. Cost of living never goes down. We never wanna make less, but that's why it's critical to understand your budget, your benefits and so forth. So save money now, in addition to a, maybe a 401k plan that we'll talk about next. Um, and I talked about earlier, understand the concept of saving early based on how interest compounds. Interest, I mean, if you have money in, say when you're 20 years old, it's gonna obviously say when you're 50 or 60, it's gonna have a lot of time to compound versus if you wait till you're 50 and then by the time you're 60, it's not gonna be as much. And I, I know some people, I don't give a shit, or I don't know, or how do I understand that? Hey, you know what, I don't know. Find those wizards, I mean, Google that stuff. Worth, I mean, worst comes worst. I mean, I know buyer beware, and do your homework, but still, learn about basic. Take a college class in economics. Yeah, it ain't sexy and fun, but you'll learn a lot. But savings are critical, because what happens if your pension isn't there? Even if your pension is there, think about this. I know sometimes it's not uncommon for firefighters to die of cancer or die right after their retirement. But on the flip side, that's true in some cases, but in other cases, we are seeing sometimes firefighters even live longer just because 
now with some of the retirement plans around the country, it's not uncommon to see firefighters retiring maybe at 40 years old, 45, 50. Yeah, they got to get second jobs because their pension isn't enough to obviously support them. But think about this. Let's say you do retire at 50. Your pension may be really good at 50, 53, 54. But now imagine 55, 60, 70, 80. Well, I'm not going to live that long. Never say never. With health and wellness being such a big issue today, yes, I know we have a big cancer problem around the country, but there are some that are living longer and that money that you retire in, assuming you're still alive in 30 or 40 years from now, may not be as good as it is in those dollars. So that's why it's critical to have other forms of revenue. Um, just like I said, <laughs> diverse your portfolio, have other forms of revenue when possible. Some other tips. If you do have a 401k savings plan, max the crap out of it. When I got hired, the maximum amount we could put into our 401k was $15,000, I think it was. So I could put up to $15,000 a year into my salary. Now it's gone up a little bit and everything else. Most of the classmates I got hired with don't even, I don't, why do I need that? I got my pension. Well, again, understanding how money multiplies over time. Now, we all know there's good years and bad years when it comes to the economy. We had the last downturn in 2008 to about 2011, give or take. Now we're seeing one, say 2020, for I don't know how long, a year, two, three years. It's usually maybe every 10 or 15 years. So yeah, your 401k may go up and may go down, but again, over time, they usually go up if you're in there long enough. So when I say maxing it out on day one, think about it. When you're hired at day one, that's usually the best time to start saving because especially if you don't have a family to provide for, it's just you, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. Also, when you get hired, usually, you start at the lowest step. Usually what we call the raises in government is step raises, civil service step raises, like step one is the lowest step, maybe at the date of hire, then maybe one year on the job, you get step two, which is 5% extra. Step three, a year later, 5% extra. Step four, 5% above that. Step five, 5% above. So in theory, you're on the job four years, you get five raises, each 5% for a total of 25%. Well, you also may get cost of living raises um, based on how the economy is doing and based on how your union contract was negotiated. So here's the thing. When I got hired, I'm like, you know what? I was told, max out your deferred comp because I knew in five years, give or take, I would have basically 25% of raises because of the step system. You know, step one, two, three, four, five. Entry level firefighter up to top step firefighter, which is four and a half, it was four and a half years, it used to be in our department. So I knew I'd get 25% right there. I also knew we had a union contract in place for a, you know, 4% this year, 5% next year, 3% the year after, you know, whatever, 3% the year after that. I also knew that in about a year, I'd be starting my paramedic um, license. I was already a paramedic, but once you've been on the job for a few months, it takes a while before they up you to paramedic status, once you complete all your paramedic requirements. And then there's 10% bonus. So, yeah, you may get hired at rock bottom right now, but then over the first, especially the first five years between your step raises, maybe any cost of living raises, maybe any paramedic bonus or hazmat bonus, your salary is going up. So if you can get used to parting with a shitload of money in the beginning, meaning max out as much as you can, as those raises come in, it makes that initial hit easier as time goes by. Versus let's say you stop, you don't do any at all. And then all of a sudden you're getting used to that cost. Of, I mean, that, you, that quality of life, I guess, buying your toys. Then maybe you get a family and all of a sudden, oh, I, I can't save, I can't afford it. Well, you could afford it if you're already used to that money not being there. But again, just some suggestions. I don't, I'm not telling you what to do. But as I mentioned earlier, it's much easier to start saving when you're younger, especially when you tend to get more raises I shared about early in your career. And you may not have a family and or expensive lifestyle. It sure is tough when you're in your 40s or 50s trying to now go back and catch up for the last 20 years. You, you can't, it, it's mathematically impossible. Things don't get cheaper. So don't budget your lifestyle again. Another tip, relying on overtime. It's amazing how many firefighters I hear about across the country that, you know, they live and die on overtime. Overtime is not a right. It's not guaranteed. It's a privilege. Most departments have overtime, meaning time and a half. And you work one 24-hour shift, that can be pretty good money. Um, work, you know, one 24-hour shift a month or two a month. Hell, in some departments, one a week or two a week. <laughs> That'll help pay your mortgage or buy those toys or whatever it is or help you save and everything else. But, uh, you know, maybe easier when, you're fam when you don't have a family to work overtime. When you have overtime, I mean, when you, ah, sorry, 
when you have a family, that may not be the best time to work overtime because you should be, you know, everyone says family first, we'll prove it. Well, I got to feed my family, so I got to work the overtime. Well, here's the thing. If your mortgage or house payment or condo payment or toy payments all combined or lifestyle in general require you to work like so many overtimes, like one overtime a month or two overtimes a month, you're setting yourself up for disaster because it overtime can get stopped at any given time, at any given moment. And I've seen that happen and I've seen people stress. I've heard of stories during the last economic downturn from 08 to 10 or 11 of firefighters that were in million dollar homes that had to basically default on their loans because they got in like it, not low interest, no interest loans. When you have a no interest loan, you're never paying off the principal. You're just basically, um, oh, I'm sorry, not no interest. Uh, sorry, no interest would be awesome. Um, it was a, um, I can't remember the, sorry, can't remember the, what the concept is. Basically, when you have a mortgage, you're, you're paying it off. And uh, the longer you have in the mortgage, the closer you get to the end, the more you're paying it off. And obviously, the closer you get to paying it off. But there was some, oh, um, oh, interest only, I'm sorry, interest only loan, no principal. And then they went, they lost their homes. I mean, and it's like, how could you, first of all, how could you even afford that home being a fi on a firefighter's salary? Well, my wife was working, you know, and I had a second job and I worked overtime. And then of course my second job went away. Wife's job went away and we're fucking, you know, like, oh, 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 dude. Okay, that's a news flash. Don't live above your means. The sad part is we see it everywhere, every day in every walk of life. It's across the country and every, you know, you see it around the corner from your house, across the street. Don't be that person. It's okay. Talked about overtime is a privilege, not a right. In some departments, like I said, overtime is just shut down. Instead, you know, overtime is there to staff a position usually when someone calls in sick or is on vacation. Well, in some departments, the budgets are so bad, like in some departments, at least around the Bay Area right now, I'm hearing where departments or cities in general, which includes the fire department and police department, may be taking, well, they're already losing 10 to 20% of the revenues because of no taxes or reduced taxes coming in. And that's gonna go all the way down to the rank and file of every division, parks and rec, police, library, fire, and there may be some pay cuts or no raises happening. And guess what? When a rig, when like a firefighter calls in sick, they don't pay anyone overtime. They shut the rig down. They move those remaining two people out to other companies. So yeah, overtime's expensive. So you mortgage or mortgage or toy payments rely on the overtime time to cut back on your drastically or drastically excuse me drastically adjust your habits yeah learn from the mistakes of others hopefully you've got some wise firefighters senior folks on the job that are telling you this good advice sadly many don't for some reason because they're not managing their finances correctly um, if your significant other spouse has the ability to work partner whatever i strongly encourage consider they do so. Now, I don't want to start any relationship breakups or divorces or even worse, domestic violence or anything else. That's not me. And But, I mean, I'm fortunate that I have that a, a wife that works. It makes things a lot more comfortable. You know, it makes things a lot more easier. But unfortunately, you know, depending on what your system is at home or what your expectations are, it may not be the case. And I know it's nice to have your significant other spouse, partner, girlfriend, boyfriend at home to raise kids. I get that. And sometimes that's cheaper than daycare, depending on what job they have. But, you know, the dual incomes are definitely nice. You know, hopefully that won't cause, a, like I said, a fight or even worse relationship breakup. And again, like I said, I'll deny and take no responsibility. I'm not a lawyer, not a financial advisor. You're on your own. Sorry. Choose wisely. Some things to think about, as I mentioned earlier, that money compounds, you know, er, when you started earlier versus later, these are your golden years. Your golden years are not your retirement years. Everyone says my golden years, you know, when I'm in my 50s, 60s, 70s. Hell, I know we may be living longer sometimes. Granted, cancer is bad, but we also are a more healthier society for the most part. You can't bank on, well, when I retire, I'll go cruise the world, you know? Well, you know what? You may not be able to cruise the world, I mean, based on your physical or mental capacity. I mean, that. look at some of these diseases that are happening out there, like Alzheimer's, dementia, memory, you know, care-related issues. Yeah, I'm not saying be stupid and go be careless, recklessly careless right now in your 20s and 30s, but do have fun. Enjoy life. Take trips. 
try to be reasonable. You know, if you can pay for your trip with overtime or a second job, awesome. You know, and then it doesn't cut into anything. But these are your golden years. But also, you got to save for your golden years. You know, enjoy your life, live within your means, and realize time flies faster than you want. Don't put off that, well, you know, one of these days I'll, we're going to do that. You know what? Do it. Look at this COVID-19 scenario. Now, if you, this is 2020. If you're watching this in 2040, God forbid, thank you very much, 20 years after the fact. Hopefully I'm still alive. But you may not understand this 10, 20, 30 years from now, but at least for right now, I mean, I think the best thing my wife shared with me is that, you know what, here we were five months ago, we had no idea of this coronavirus pandemic that pretty much shut the world down. You know what, enjoy your life. I mean, don't do stupid things, don't live outside your means, but you know what, take those trips, do those things you enjoy doing while you're still healthy and everything else. Just, it's just a matter of balance, you know, but also save early, save often, plan and prepare so you can enjoy your well-deserved retirement. So that's what it's there for. But again, you need to supplement it. So as a wise engineer once taught me when I was learning to be the driver, the engineer, the driver of an apparatus, the gazinias must equal, but definitely exceed the gazaltias. And you're like, what the hell is that? Okay. The driver of a fire apparatus, typically a pumper. So a typical fire engine, which is known as a pumper, has a pump, has hose, has water amongst other tools. Well, the saying here is that the gazinias, meaning if you want to flow a certain amount of water, because we have, when we have a fire that we have to fight, we have to use water. And usually the water needs to be pumped, thus the pump on the pumper or the engine. And usually the 500 gallons of water on most engines is not enough to put out maybe some fires. So we usually have to hook up to a hydrant to get a continuous water supply. Okay, basic stuff. Well, as the engineer of the rig, and you're watching this water flow out on the fire, You've got to have enough water coming in, the gazinias, at, if not more than what you have going out because you're going to cavitate your pump. You know, so if, you're, if you want to flow 1,500 gallons per minute out of that deck gun, you better have at least 1,500 gallons, if not more, coming out of that hydrant. Maybe you've got to get a second hydrant. But using this as an analogy for money, whatever's coming in money-wise, revenue-wise, just like a city, must exceed what's going out. And unfortunately, like in a lot of city cases, that's why we're city, seeing a lot of cities do layoffs um, or try to, you know, ask for employee groups to take pay cuts or hold off raises because, again, the revenues are not coming in and you can't live like that. <laughs> you, you can't live like that. Eventually, something's going to bust. Maybe you go bankrupt or if that was your business, you'd be out of business. So, as always, thank you very much for the gift of your time, my contact info, my social media footprint. I know it's a little different than some of the other stuff I was talking about, but if anything else, I just hope I piqued your interest to say, you know what, I got to take a look into that. Because here's the thing, you look at a firefighter job flyer or job announcement, usually it's just like the only things most people care about, okay, salary, okay, oh, that's cool, that's bitching. Uh, I get healthcare benefits, you don't know what they mean, but oh yeah, I got healthcare benefits, bitching, okay. Uh, I got maybe a retirement savings or maybe a 401k, uh, whatever, ah, who cares, that's 30 years away, I don't have to worry about that. Oh, 10 days a month, cool. Fight fire, save lives. Cool. It's all balance. All right. Until the next time, y'all take care. Y'all be safe. And we'll see you soon, everybody.